completely mainstream for another couple of years and it will become mainstream. You're hedging your bets, Will. Because here's the yeah. thing, right? I think gamers are going to play it. I agree. Gamers are going to game. They're going to enjoy yep. this uh, virtual reality experience. They, they already spend hundreds of pounds so that they can play games online. Fine. Get that. Yeah. I don't see it as a mainstream product that our listeners right now are going to be watching movies in and stuff like that. I think this but is going to be 3D TV again. No, one, no one's going to watch it. You say that. I actually put my uh, retired... I always talk, see, talk about my dad an awful lot when I'm talking to you. My retired dad got into the um, the Gear VR, which is their mobile phone headset, which uh, Oculus made with Samsung last year. And he spent about an hour and a half underwater with a shark. And he's never had any remote interest in games or any of that technology. So I think... Um, uh, over time, more and more people will see the VR headsets and the apps that come to them, not just the games, as being something that will, will power, a, you know, a, a, set, a set sort of a subsection of tech of its own as well. Look, I admire your resilience, but again, I put it to you, can you name a single gadget in the last 30 years where you've had to put on a stupid pair of glasses or a helmet that has actually taken off? You always look ridiculous with them. Uh, well, that's a fairly true comment, unless you're a fighter pilot. <laughs> I just have my doubts. But anyway, I am, like you, interested to try it. I think my dad would give it a go, though. Uh, let's talk about what's going to be happening online, because uh, the year just gone by, 2015, seemed to be the year of the cyber attack. Is, is that going to continue as well? Yeah, I think we're going to see more of these. And we saw the BBC's digital services taken down on New Year's Eve by what's called a distributed denial of service attack. And those um, using Ashley Madison will have been, obviously, most put out by online hacking this year but um, I hate to be a, a sort of a bearer of bad news and I always try to keep positive when I come on to LBC but it feels to me only like the grim inevitability that we're going to see a major cyber attack in 2016 um, I read a really interesting piece online today that claimed that a nation state could even attempt to tamper with Olympic timing devices to improve their chances which sounds far-fetched but when you've seen that like people, uh, states like China have been targeting the Tibetan minority through their hotmail accounts and there's still a strong feeling that North Korea was involved in that Sony hack in 2014 it's only a matter of, a t a matter of time before a tech attack impacts our daily lives it could be an attack on the power network it could use, it causes the transformers to overload they could try and open the dams um, or major banks could be paralysed by attacks keep our fingers crossed that this doesn't happen but if you look at security and cyber security it's still not taken seriously enough by governments and also big businesses okay and what about cars. Uh, I know that you have bought yourself an electric car, so you're obviously, you know, not the right person to ask. You haven't got any sense at all of what the general public really want, but tell me what do you think is going to sell. Do you, do you know how much I've spent on fuel in the last two and a half months? Oh, come on. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. Seven quid. I've yeah, got seven quid worth of fuel into that car. How much have you put into yours? Considerably more than that. Do you know how long it takes me to fuel my car? One how minute. Long? One well, minute. It takes me, takes me 25 to fill mine. <laughs> I, can, I can fill... I can fill my time. I've always got things to do. Sure. Um, it's going to be uh, very interesting, and I think CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, there's going to be a really big um, automotive focus this year. Uh, rumours are pointing to Alphabet, which is Google's new owner, and Ford joining forces to create self-driving cars. Well, Apple's been integrating um, some of the iPhone tech into uh, in-car stereos and those kind of things. So car cars and automotive is becoming a key focus of Silicon Valley. Um, apparently, car tech is going to take up three and a half football fields worth of space at CES this year, which is about a 50% increase on last year. Um, we're going not we're not going to see driverless cars, Ollie, till the 2020s, but I think we are going to see partnerships between tech and uh, car, car giants uh, moving forward as they kind of push towards these driverless cars. Okay, and finally, well, uh, when in the year do you think people will start asking the question, what's going to be in the iPhone 7? Uh, they already have, Ollie, and um, I'm not necessarily convinced that the iPhone 7 is going to be the massive success that everybody thinks. I think this will be the year that people start going to hold on Apple products, and Apple needs to start innovating, and they've got so, so much money, they can start creating some exciting new products again. Well, not only predictions, but a gauntlet thrown down as well by LBC's tech correspondent, Will Guy. Happy New Year, Will. And to you, Ollie. Pleasure to do business with you, as ever. Gentleman and scholar, Will Guyatt. Well, that is it from me tonight. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Ollie with a Y, M A W N. Uh, I will be back on air tomorrow night from 6, but I've got an hour extra tomorrow, 6 till 9, and then that Ian Dale Book Club special at 9 till 10 tomorrow night. Uh, slightly different schedule for Saturdays tomorrow. Uh, don't forget, you can listen to LBC whenever you want, wherever you are. Just download the free LBC app for your mobile or tablet and never miss a moment. Uh, 
Uh, leading Britain's conversation at one is Christo, but right now it's Nick Abbott. And my tech prediction for the new year: sink all of your money into Betamax and Eight Track. Trust me, you heard it here first. When the country is holding its head in its hands and moaning piteously to itself, it's time to be on maximum alert, because that is a very good time to bury bad news, and the authorities have tried to do just that. There's the inebriation of our elected representatives, which those on the inside are trying to keep a secret. There's the docile capitulation to the banking racketeers by their close personal friends in government. And there is the business that is killing you that is being protected from losing money by the people that are supposed to be looking after your best interests. Keep your eyes peeled, and we won't let them get away with it. It starts after the news with me, Nick Abbott, on LBC. On FM, online, on your mobile, and on digital radio. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. Newsroom at 10 o'clock. German police continue to hunt for up to seven people suspected of plotting suicide attacks in Munich. But officials say they're not sure that the suspects are still in the country, though. Last night, authorities received concrete information that New Year partygoers would be targeted. The threat led to the closure of two main train stations. While speaking to LBC expert in extremism and terrorism, Professor Roger Griffin. What we might be dealing with is a bomb hoax or we might be dealing with something really quite interesting, which is that ISIS sympathizers realize that all they have to do is make a telephone call and they can have an effect without killing anybody at all, but just to keep up the sense of threat and terror. So it's not really surprising. It could have been Berlin. It could have been any major city. A man has died after he was attacked by his dog in Preston. Matt Steele has more. Lancashire police say officers were called this afternoon to the scene where paramedics were treating the 22-year-old man, but he couldn't be saved and died from his injuries. Detectives tell us their inquiries are ongoing. The dog has been put down by a vet. A man has been repeatedly stabbed in a train station car park in Winsford in Cheshire. It's thought the victim was attacked after he challenged a group of passengers who were throwing objects around a train carriage. Three people have died after being hit by trains during the first nine hours of the new year. One person was hit by a train at Clapham North Underground Station in South London in the early hours. The body of a man was found on tracks near a level crossing in Burnley and a man's body was discovered by police half a mile outside London's Paddington Station. Two people have died and seven others have been injured after a gunman opened fire at a bar in Tel Aviv. CCTV shows the suspect taking a weapon out of his backpack and then shooting. Noga Tanapolsky is a reporter in Jerusalem and has told LBC the attacker is still on the run. The perpetrator of the attack in Tel Aviv is an Israeli citizen, an Arab Israeli citizen from the Lower Galilee. He was identified by his own father on the CCTV film. He is the relative, either the nephew or the cousin, of a man who was killed in a confrontation with Israeli police two years ago. Grammy-winning singer Natalie Cole has died at the age of 65. Her family say she passed away in hospital in Los Angeles last night from ongoing health issues. And some NatWest customers are reporting problems with using their debit cards. The bank has apologised and says it's working hard to fix the problem. And LBC weather, breezy for London and the southeast. Showers sometimes heavy through the night. Lows tonight of 7 degrees. Rain will spread eastwards, covering most of England, Wales and Northern Ireland and Scotland will see snow on the hills but it will stay above freezing. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Zora Suleiman. This is LBC, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Nick Abbott on LBC. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Excellent question, Chump. They're protecting their own is what the hell is going on. New year, new you. What do you think of it so far? Oh, fabulous. George Osborne was accused of forcing city regulators to scrap and probe into Britain's banking culture. Yeah, they should be probed. Mm. Charles Rousset. Mm. <laughs> I just 
just a mental image of that. Just flash into my mind just for one moment, and I thought, disgusting. Yeah. The, uh, t the Chancellor is said to have influenced the move to scrap a probe into Britain's banking culture after a string of cosy chats with top industry executives. Records show that he held almost 90 meetings with senior bankers. Now, if you've been trying to get a meeting with George Osborne, this is the reason why. Because he's up to his eyeballs in uh, chit-chat with um, top industry executives of the banking bracket. 90 meetings he had with senior bankers since he took office in 2010, including five in the three months following May's general election. Truly, we are all in this together. Three cheers for George Osborne. Hit it! The Financial Conduct Authority has now shelved plans for a far-reaching inquiry into pay and behaviour in the industry. They have shelved those plans. Anybody surprised? No. No. No, uh, no one is. The Liberal Dem leader, Tim Farron. Oh, that should have been a pop quiz. The Liberal Dem leader... Uh, I see, I've told you already, but maybe you've forgotten. In the brief moments that I've just given you the answer. The Lib Dem leader. Anybody? Anybody at all in the back there? Tim Farron. He said the public are rightly fed up with the banking sector, marking its own homework and cutting out anyone with a critical eye. Any hope of a change and progress has been dashed, said Tim Farron, the Lib Dem leader. And he's only the Lib Dem leader, by the way, because uh, uh, Nick Clegg was so very, very popular. Poor Nick. It's not your fault, Nick. It's all his fault. Anyway, so the public are fed up. They're fed up of being fed up, mostly. Any hope of change and progress has been dashed with a very clear return to business as you... Not that kind of business. Business as usual. Cozy decisions between the banks and the politicians and a toothless regulator led us to one of the biggest financial crashes in living memory, says Tim Farron, the leader of the, uh, the Lib Dems. Well, he's no dope. They don't give these <laughs> jobs out to jobs, you know. <laughs> Despite what, uh, you, if you, uh, you know, the, the fact that you may have thought otherwise. Exactly. Cozy decisions between the banks and the politicians and a toothless regulator has led us to one of the biggest financial crashes in living memory. Not, not one of, the biggest financial crash possibly of all time. And it's all thanks to the watchdogs. Uh, the high-risk players in the banks will have to gamble with public money with little care of what might happen, said Tim Farron of the Liberal Democrats. Correct. He's completely correct in every respect. You go, Tim Farron, leader of the Liberal Democrats, whoever they are. Since entering number 11, George Osborne has been an absolute shower. Oh, no, wait, that's not right. He has held 87 minutes, meetings rather, with banks including, but not limited to, Goldman Sachs, UBS, Deutsche Bank, Lloyds, and the Royal Bank of Scotland. And they, in turn, laid on some luxury dinners and lunches for him. Oh, I can only dream of going to a luxury dinner or luncheon munchen. In July alone, oh boy was he busy, he met with Jamie Dimon, the chief executive of US banking giant JP Morgan, and representatives from HSBC, and representatives from Standard Chartered, and Santander. Two months later, he held a meeting with Barclays, as well as attending a luncheon hosted by HSBC. These people are as close as two coats of paint. The Financial Conduct Inquiry, Conduct Authority Inquiry, the Financial Inquiry was meant to examine whether pay and promotion and other incentives contributed to a host of wrongdoings, including LIBOR and the PPI mis-selling scandals. Wrongdoings. Now you love the benign terminology they use when they are describing a criminal behaviour by the banking racket. Wrongdoings. Mis-selling. What they actually mean is lying, cheating, stealing, crooked, conniving, fraud. You know, if a poor person was to try that on, they would go get them put in jail faster than they could bank their loot. But if you are actually in the banking racket, lying, cheating, stealing, crooked, conniving, fraud gets you a title and a seat in the House of Lords. <gasps> Fabulous. <sighs> HSBC, by the way, has been ordered to pay a record £28 million for allowing money laundering to take place in its Swiss subsidiary and fined in the US for its role in aiding money laundering by Mexican drug cartels. Yeah! 
Holy smoke, they're in bed with the drugs racket. Bankers were also exposed for inflating their bonuses by manipulating the foreign exchange rates. Manipulating. Lying, cheating, stealing, cookie, conniving, fraud. That's the only thing they're interested in. And you, and you know what it is? It's the same thing that's going to do for the human race. It, it's the same problem all over. It's a people thing. It's called short-termism. As a race, I think we are, uh, in the great scheme of things, about three years old. The human race is uh, about at the level of uh, the baby. It can only think in terms of what I want right now. And this is the problem, and uh, this is the reason that we're in this uh, gigantic mess. We're still not out of it yet, by the way. I mean, I know they've been banging on about green shoots and the uh, future's so bright we've got to wear shades and all that jazz, but we, we still haven't climbed out of this gigantic hole that they put us in. These people put us in this hole and they sail in a solid gold yacht, clinking their cocktail glasses and laughing at us from the poop deck, if you please. We were, well, we were being drowned in, uh, in, in, in an eddy, in a virtual punado. Former FCA, Financial Conduct Authority boss Michael Wheatley, was reviled by bankers for his tough stance, and he was chucked out by the Chancellor in July. He was going to get, uh, well, he wasn't really going to crack down on the banks, not really, not in any, um, in any uh, proper sense that you and I might think of as, uh, you know, like really, really cracking down on them and giving them what they deserve. No, but they didn't like it anyway, so they, uh, they had a whisper in George's ear and he chucked him out. Tory MP Mark Garnier, Tory MP by the way, Mark Garnier, who sits on the Commons Treasury Select Committee, suggested that the watchdog was pressurised by Mr Osborne's department. The Tory MP Mark Garnier said that. Now, if a Labour MP had spoken out in such terms against the Labour uh, Shadow Chancellor, oh, good grief, it'd be on the front page of the papers and it's... Uh, uh,